Twas on a dark night when nary a guard made a sound, when suddenly from the shadows stepped a fright. Oh, it was low and base and close to the ground. Dark was its heart, dark was its purpose, and yet from afar it sounded like a purpose. Porpoise? Oh, I can never get the last line right. I'm a pretty bad bard. Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. We are looking at the class of bard. Now, the bard is arguably a class that people look at and go, is it just there for comedic effect? I'm not sure. What does the bard do? The bard is this class that, for those of us that have been around for quite a long time, is a relative newcomer to the uh, stable of characters that we can now play. But what is a bard and why would we want to play them? Well, it's a good question and the merits of a bard is that bards are generally fairly versatile characters. They have lots of different abilities to pull on skill, knowledge, there's bardic lore that they know things about the past from the stories and the songs that they have heard and gathered and collected over time. So bards are a remarkable class in so far as they fit into that space somewhere between a rogue and a wizard and a warrior and fill a gap which we all didn't know we were missing. So the merits of the bard, they're versatile. They're sometimes the mouthpiece of the bard. The bard generally has a good charisma and is eloquent or at least is informed enough to be able to have a decent conversation with almost anyone that the party might meet. The bard is also a support character, so they're there to make sure that everybody else is just that much better in combat. Those are some pretty good roles and reasons to play a bard. Now, another thing to bear in mind when looking at the bard is that there are some negatives. They're not a lot, but there are some. And one of them I'm saving for the very end of this video because, for me, it's a negative, but it's also an incredibly, incredibly powerful story. And that's something that we need to look at. So that's at the end of the video. So the negatives of a bard is that they generally need other party members. A lot of their skills and things, although they can affect themselves, are better if they affect the party members. They are a, obviously a support character. So that means they're not front line. They're not going to charge into combat because they're not as heavily armed or as healthy as other classes that are uh, front line individuals. They're also not true magic users. They're not throwing out vast amounts of magic. They're not true healers. They're not true anything. So oftentimes the bard is left sort of sitting between two stools, not really knowing where they fit within that group. And that can leave many players feeling disillusioned or, quite frankly, underpowered. They don't have a specific goal or a specific purpose. Now, as you know, I usually favor classes who have that as one of their negatives because it allows you to explore other options and to look at the narrative behind the class rather than the actual tactical abilities of the class. Now, the potentials of the Bard are almost infinite because the Bard is the one who is there to lighten the way, to sing the songs, to perform the mime, to raise the spirits of the party. So if you are playing a bard and you're not doing that, then I think you've missed the point of the bard, or you're playing a bard that's a very different kind of bard, and we do look at the different types of bard just a little bit. So the bard is hope, basically. The bard should be the one there fulfilling the role of raising morale, should be the one there filling the role of speaking on behalf of the party, of being the life of the party, as a matter of fact, of bringing the party to the dungeon. That's what the bard's job really is. And if they're not doing that, then, well, we need to look at that. So if we then look at the different types of bard, you get the singing standard bard, Cacophonix from Asterix and Obelix is a great example of a singing bard. They just want to sing. Whether they're good at it or not, well, remains to be seen. But the singing bard is the traditional bard. You then get the 
Storytelling Bard. Now, the Storytelling Bard, although technically it's exactly the same as the Singing Bard, the Storytelling Bard's focus is on storytelling. And that's going to tie in with what we're going to cover at the end of the video. So the Storytelling Bard is someone who collects stories. Now, the Singing Bard obviously is going to have a slightly different focus in terms of their role play. And again, I'm saving that for the end of the video. And I think you can guess what that is. The story bard, of course, is focused on gathering stories and on using that ability to unlock the stories of those that they pass by. Bards are particularly intimidating, especially for me as a GM, because I know that if they're played by a good player, they're going to want to ask my NPCs all kinds of questions about local stories, myths, legends. Bards, from a dungeon master's perspective, are fantastic because they bring in the ability for the dungeon master to expand and to talk about history and events and things that happened in the past that the dungeon master may have come up but that normal party would never uncover you also get the scoundrel the scoundrel is the dashing hero who doesn't do a huge amount of fighting but who woos all of the uh, individuals that they would prefer to woo whether it's uh, men women sheep goats or everything in between who knows but the scoundrel is the bard who is there to look good in candlelight to swing from chandeliers whilst decrying the beauty of the woman or that he is or she is saving and to do so in a spectacular fashion the scoundrel is a dramatic performing combatant if nothing else you get the poet now the poet again very similar to the storytelling bard and the uh, singing bard but of course their focus is on poetry if you're not very good at poetry well you don't have to worry too much have you read some of the poetry that's out there these days now, the last two different types of bards are, in my opinion, very different, and I haven't seen them played often. So if you do play a bard in this way, wouldn't you leave your comments below as to how you did it and how much fun you had doing it? The last, second to last type of bard that I want to talk about is the ambassador. This is a bard who relies on their skills, their social understanding, as well as their ability to tap into those historical stories and legends to be able to have interesting, informing conversations with others. Now, this allows them to ingratiate themselves into almost any culture that they come across, allowing for the bard to literally act as the ambassador. This is not a bard who's going to jump on stage and start singing. This is a bard who's going to sit at a banqueting table and chat to the king of the goblins and have a good time whilst doing it, but gets all of the information out of the king of the goblins by simply chatting and being civil. So the ambassador role, I think, is a role that the, the bard plays particularly well. Far better almost than any other class, just because their skill sets lend themselves towards this kind of role. Now, the final type of bard, and this for me is something that's very exciting, and I haven't seen it very often, is the historian slash Indiana Jones style bard. This is a bard who uses their skills and abilities to understand historical events and drives it forward as an individual who requires a bit of dexterity, requires a little bit of combat savvy, but generally requires their wits in order to infiltrate a position or place and get some piece of historically relevant data or treasure, as the case might be. So the Indiana Jones style bard for me is someone who is quite interesting because they're not the traditional use of the character class. Now we get to that end of video that I've been promising you for so long. When we look at the stories that can come out of being a bard, well, the stories that can come out of being a bard are whatever you write. Now, if you're a storytelling bard, you should be writing down the stories of the party. If you're a singing bard, you should try at least to come up with a song or two. Now, advice that I've got from people who have played bards in the past is don't try and create your own music unless that's your thing. Rather, find contemporary music and rewrite the lyrics to fit your party's names and the actions that they have gone through. It makes it a lot easier and you will earn a tremendous amount of brownie points from your party members if you create a song that features them. 
writing their story in an epic way and sharing it over social messenger groups and that sort of thing will earn you an equal amount of points. If you want to write poetry, well, good for you and someone somewhere will appreciate it. But generally speaking, I'd avoid it. I'm joking. That poetry can be particularly moving and particularly funny. So when it comes to what stories best fit a bard, the answer is actually the bard best fits all stories. They go on the journey that others are on and they turn them into stories. That is basically what they are for, is they are the storytellers, the songwriters of the age. So if that's what you're doing, that's fantastic. Now, I do know that there are people out there who go, well, if the bard is supposed to write down the stories and come up with songs, should the wizards and the, well, should the wizards be coming up with the words for the spells that they use? And should the priests be coming up with the prayers that they speak to their gods? My answer is yes, they should. It makes it that much more visceral. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it makes them more of an owner of their character and it makes the spells and prayers and things that they come up with that much more real, as a matter of fact, in terms of being able to imagine this wizard casting a spell or this priest uttering a prayer. So I would advocate that bards at least attempt some form of imitation of what they purport to be able to do. I hope you like this little view on bards. There has been a request for warlocks, and so I shall do warlocks. Not next week. Next week uh, we take a little bit of a break. There's another video that we'll be playing in this uh, usual slot. It's one of the GM walkabouts. Uh, there's more coming up next week on what exactly is going to come up next week. If you watch the uh, YouTube updates, uh, the Facebook updates, my apologies. If you join the Facebook groups every week on the Monday, we uh, tell you what's coming up and uh, give you a sneak peek of what you might catch on the channel. Next week's channel video promises to be quite, quite illuminating as uh, you'll see what that's all about when it plays out. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing. Thank you.